get a um, close up of what the collar setup is on this side over here, just to show the um, carabiner. So we have the prong collar, carabiner, e collar, flat buckle. You can always also do the carabiner to the e collar if you want. Totally up to you. I just I like to do this for right now, but that's the setup. Leash. Okay. All right, so we are doing e-collar heel with Bougie, and I'm gonna walk you through what we're doing with the e-collar, and a couple of things to really pay attention to is how I'm moving, I'm gonna use a lot of my body movement, and I will talk about what levels I'm using. So his working level was a 10, so I'm starting at an 11, but I can always dial down or dial up, depending on the moment, how distracted he is, because when a dog is more distracted, sometimes the levels have to go up a little bit. So keep that in mind. Um, so at first, I'm going to kind of use his uh, distraction stuff, like being distracted by things to my advantage and kind of mold the walk how I want it to look. So no pressure at first. Um, he is also reactive on leash. He barks at a lot of things. I haven't seen that yet, but doesn't mean it won't happen. But I'm not too worried about that right now. Even if that, that happens, you don't have to catch everything right away. That will come with some time. But all right, let's go. We, you want to go on this side? All right. So first, of course, I'm relying more on the e-collar than the prong collar. Prong collar is just there for extra guidance. So I'm going to go ahead and start. What I like to do is tap, 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 taps. Don't say anything when he gets to where I want him to be. Good. I'm not worried about layering um, a command over it yet. That will come a little bit later because right now I could say pizza. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything to him right now, but it will. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. I'm at a level 11. Good. So he's a little unsure, but that's okay. That doesn't mean we're doing anything wrong. This is really good just to work him through it. Good. I'm gonna dial back down to 10. He's just giving a bit more of a reaction than I want. Good. Leash guidance at the same time I'm doing this. So again, I'm just tap, 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 tapping at a level 10 now. Good. I'm also a couple times doing continuous pressure. So you can kind of bounce back and forth. It really depends on him. So right now I'm gonna try continuous, see how he does. Good. Good boy. So we're just teaching him how to turn this pressure off. When you get to where I want you to be, pressure goes away. Good. So there I went continuous and some tapping. Again, just pay attention to your dog. I'm seeing that like continuous is kind of nice, but it might be a little too much for him. Where tap, tap, taps are a little bit nicer for a sensitive dog. So he's a big boy, but still you always want to pay attention to your dog. Even no matter what I say, like if I'm saying tap, tap, taps, and you start doing it with your dog and it's too much, you can always try something different. Try continuous or well, those are really the two. <laughs> Continuous and tapping. Good job, Bubba. So I am giving him a little more talk than I normally would because he doesn't get super excited over it. And I want him, it's just one thing I hear a lot is my dog looks like nervous or scared. So I'm not talking to him to make him feel better. I just wanna encourage what I want more of him coming towards me when he feels this and getting into the position. And then good. So a lot of times I talk about less talk is better with most dogs, but it's so dependent on the dog. With him, I think it's helpful. Good. A marker of good. I also have food, but a lot of times dogs won't take food when they're a bit unsure or nervous, and that's okay. We'll start adding in some food maybe if he sits when he gets into heel or something. Good. You can also say yes, whatever your marker word is. Good. That was continuous. So you saw a little more like, a little more motivation from him at a level 10. Good. So there I didn't use any e-collar. So I'm also looking to see <laughs> where he's at with, is he following with me when I move? Good. 
Good boy. So just because we're doing e-collar doesn't mean that everything has to be layered with e-collar. This is where it's kind of, Bobby calls it intuitive dog training, which I love. You have to be a little bit intuitive about it. And don't worry so much. We're at lower levels. This is not a big deal. So I'm gonna actually dial down to nine. Good. I'm also giving leash guidance. If he tries, he's trying to go through my legs right now, I don't want that. Just give some leash guidance. Don't look into that too much that he's scared or nervous. He's not. Just unsure. We're trying something new. Again, if he tries to go to this side, leash guidance. Anytime your dog is doing something that you don't want them to do, even little subtle things like that, leash guidance. So a lot of times I think people give up on the leash guidance too soon. Good. I'm gonna go this way. <laughs> so again, uh, well, I guess a couple of things. Make sure that you're not giving too much leash. If you're giving all of this leash, it's harder to be clear with your dog. So initially, I know everyone wants the loose, the loose leash walk. You have to take baby steps to get there. So I wanna be able to communicate with him as best as I can. Good, good boy. I'm gonna dial down one more. That was a nine. Nope. So again, he tried to go through my legs. Guidance. A little bit of leash guidance. Good. Because remember, this I say this a lot, but this is non-directional. Your dog doesn't understand this. This is why leash guidance really helps. Movement really helps. So right now, like he's still, like even though this isn't bad, this is much better than it has been. When your dog has their head out in front of you, they can still make a lot of decisions where I want him to be in follower mode. But again, first e-collar session, we're just layering it over and starting a new conversation of what the walk will look like. Good. So eight is feeling a little bit smoother, where I think 10 and nine was a little too much for him, but that's the thing about e-collar and using one with 100 levels, you can be so sensitive. And this is why don't be afraid to dial up or down. I'm trying to think if, like there's frequently asked questions. Okay, so this is where you can start to slow up a bit and see if your dog is in tune with you, not doing any e-collar. So again, bouncing back and forth between e-collar and no e-collar. Well, yeah, because that's a question I get a lot. Am I gonna have to use the e-collar forever? No, it's just the more consistent you are, the less you really have to use it, even though it's a great tool So he sees something. Good. Continuous pressure. With some dogs for prey drive stuff, I might have to go up higher, but eight was good enough. They are known to chase all the things, lizards, birds, squirrels, whatever it is. That was great. So just, I was using that distraction to my advantage. Press and hold guidance where I want him to be. Now, of course, if you have a dog that is just like losing it, you might have to dial up a little bit more just to be super clear in that moment, but it's all, not trial and error, <laughs> I don't know if that's, you're just trying different things to see what works for you and your dog. This is a great tool, but it's just a tool. It's not the tool that makes a difference, it's how you use it. So just give your, you know, go easy on yourself. All of you awesome owners that, you know, I, I'm a trainer and this is my job, so also working with a bunch of different dogs and temperaments helps me kind of know what I should be doing and helps me be a bit more intuitive. You yeah? know? All right. Good. So for that, I want to give him a piece of food. It's just a um, high value treat. I'm not too worried about using food, but for like an auto sit, and I didn't use any e collar with that one. I just wanted to see what he would do. I want a reward. This is when I will say the command heal. So just verbal, heal. But anytime you wanna reinforce the command, say it. But also, I think a lot of people um, talk too much, so you don't have to say things all the time. 
You can kind of start, I think this helps you rely more on the e-collar and leash. Good. So just layering over, tap, tap, taps. Not saying anything, just creating a new language. And we'll start to, like this is really great. Um, I want him to be back a little bit more. <laughs> so we'll start to go over that, but this is great. So he hears people, he might, I wanna hear him bark, just to see what it's like. But even if he does, don't feel like you have to like know exactly what to do with the e-collar when your dog reacts. Just know for next time, okay, he is gonna react to people. Maybe let me try at the first levels that I'm working at. Don't worry about like dialing up and correcting your dog. That will come with some time. First, this is why it's nice to do it with lower distractions. Um, but, good. So I'm gonna dial up from eight to nine, just cause he sees those people. He's doing so good. Good. Ooh, this is so fun. He's so like, that is one of the coolest things you could do is slow down and see if your dog slows down with you. I'm telling you, whenever I do that at go home sessions, or the midway and the owner is like, oh my gosh, this is the coolest. Because it is, it's like, it feels magical, you know? So he sees people. Good. Okay, nine might be too much, so I'm gonna dial back down to eight. And so again, I'm using this distraction to my advantage giving a little information. Good. Good. No. No. Good. But, and I think with him, he's an insecure dog. So giving him the job of heel will be super helpful because when he's unsure, we can be clear with him about what his job is. Oh, pooping. <gasps> All right, so this is also a cool thing about using a longer leash. I usually like to use like four to six foot leashes, but if you get a dog that's like falling into follower, follower mode, um, you can start to like have some fun with it and heal. Good. So now I'm gonna start layering heel the command over it. So actually what I usually start doing, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> He's so sweet. Good. Yeah, so I'm at a level eight still. And what I like to do, depending on the dog, sometimes the first session is all tap, 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 taps continuously, or continuous pressure, or if he starts doing like so well like this so soon, I'll start pairing heel with a double tap. So I'll say heel, double tap, move to the side. When he gets to where I want him to be, good. So we can start to just give him like a signal for heel. And then this will translate to off leash and long line work and stuff like that because you always want to think about the bigger picture. Why am I using this? I mean, to get a dog to like walk nicely, but also for the bigger picture of off leash freedom and all of that. So we want to start creating a language where we won't necessarily need a leash. Baby steps, so always use leash guidance initially, but yeah, heel. Good. So right now I'm saying heel and giving tap, tap, taps. If he was super distracted by everything and not very much in tune with me, like if I, good job. <laughs> if I slowed down and he didn't slow down with me, I wouldn't start adding the command in yet. But, but do you, if you wanna add the command in, go for it. I just like to try and not talk as much as I can. You know, I like to, yeah. 
be the energy you want to see from your dog. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, one thing I'm gonna start doing is when I stop, I'm gonna give taps until he sits. Good. Good job. So we're layering this e-collar pressure over the sit, and this is how you start to introduce an auto sit when you stop. Heel. Good. And I, I dialed down from eight to seven. Good. Still doing the heel with it continuous. Good. All right. Heel. Good. So those little moments when your dog is distracted, like he was distracted by those dogs barking, that's okay. That's, use it to your advantage in the beginning. It's a great moment to recall your dog away from it or use this pressure, because I like to use this for like recall and we start with recall off of place. So then when you're walking, you can do this recall away from a smell or a noise or whatever it is. Yeah. Fun. This is so fun. <laughs> so baby steps. So he's known to bark at people. So, good. Heel, good. Is that a seven out of 100? So he reacted a little bit, but that's just because when dogs want to do something that they're used to doing, so he wants to bark at her, or he's just like very, good. He's very interested, and his owner told me he barks at people, so um, when a dog is, when you're tell now telling a dog that they can't do that anymore, sometimes they have a bit more of a reaction to the e-collar, even though I'm at a seven out of a hundred. So, no, good. Anytime he goes to sniff the ground, because I don't want that, because that can lead to like pushy sniffing and we don't want that, so I'm just giving e-collar information. So I said no, because that's what came out of my mouth, and just pressed and held at seven. So, I'm gonna go back up to eight. This is great. Use movement. Heel. Good. No e-collar. Just because sometimes I'm... Look at his shadow. This is the coolest shadow. <laughs> it's like Batman. Bat dog. Bat dog. He's doing great. He's doing so good. Yeah, hope this is helpful. Take your time with it and yeah. I don't know, I just love this so much. I love enjoying the walks, so they just arrived yesterday, but I'm excited that now we can do, have enjoyable walks. He saw a squirrel. So again, recalling him away from it. Good stuff. Um, also one thing with two different dogs, they are from the same home. Um, I like to work with, um, good. I like to work with um, one dog at a time because they will probably be more distracting when they're around each other. So we always wanna set them up with a bit calmer um, atmosphere. So then we will bring the, I will bring them both together when I've worked with them both separately a bit. So, right Bubba? He is so sweet. Look at his face. Okay, hope this is helpful. And yeah, have fun. E collar. Mm. Heel. <laughs> oh, okay. I think that's good. Okay. Anything you want to add? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>